Hello everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we're starting on the Kerbal Space Center runway with the beautiful SSTO showing up right here. And we are going to be taking it out to Duna to have a look at the space station that I built. So this is going to be the beginning of a two-part series uh, where we're going to be showing off the Duna colony I have over at Duna. So basically what we have going on now is the uh, SSTO, which I've called the Flylon, because it looks like a Skylon, but it flies. Uh, which the Skylon has never done. So uh, the Flylon uh, is what we're going to be calling it. And it is an absolutely awesome SSTO. It's one of my favorites I've ever built. Like, look, it just shoots off the runway. I'm, I'm going to play uh, this most of this ascent in normal time speed. Like, this is not sped up at all. You can see how absolute, you know, this thing is a rock, absolutely rocket, rocketry, piece of rocketry. That, that's what that is. It is amazing. It is fast. I'm very happy with it. And we're going to be taking it out to Duna, and we are going to be picking up some pretty special guests, and we're going to be going down to the base in part two, and we are going to be having a look at what's going on. I've got uh, basically a whole Duna colony set up there. Unfortunately, I didn't record the construction of it, uh, but the construction was just a nightmare, so I don't think you guys would have been, it wouldn't have been a good video either way. But I'm just going to show up the system. So what, I'm going to just go ahead and preview the video as we accelerate up. Uh, if you want me to talk about the ascent of the SSTO, I do that in my other SSTO video that I, uh, as of recording, only have one other SSTO video, uh, which is the 500 seat SSTO, in which I go into a lot more depth as to uh, the ascent profile. Basically, what we're doing is going fast and high. So, uh, Arduna base slash colony, it's more of a colony. So, it consists of two main parts. We have the space station in low Duna orbit and then a base. So, the way the system works is that... It's uh, mainly meant to be a refueling base on interplanetary missions or just as a system for transporting crew or tourists or whatever. Uh, so the base will be doing all of the fuel harvesting and the fuel refining and then it will be sent up on a shuttle out to the station in which it can meet any craft that want to be refueled. So this uh, Flylon, which is our crew transport vehicle, uh, will only get you to the station. It does not have enough Delta V to land or take off at Duna. It only has enough Delta V to get to Duna orbit and dock the station. It doesn't have enough to get back. So what this is going to do is it's going to dock up with the station and then we are going to go send some crew down to the base, see what's going on, and uh, we are going to pick up some Kerbals on the base. And then we're going to go ahead and grab some fuel from our base, fly it back up to the station. Uh, after, once the Kerbals are done with their stay, we will go ahead and bring them back up to the station, get back on the fly line, refuel it, and then head back to Kerbin. That's going to be basically what happens in this two-part series. And uh, this is part one. This one will take you through uh, docking with the station, getting to Duna, obviously, then docking with the station, and then we're going to be doing the landing onto Duna. Part two, we will be uh, arriving at the base, we will be refueling everything, and then we will be heading back to Kerbin. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here at the beginning because this, this these videos were the worst. These videos were literally the worst. <laughs> Out of all the videos I've ever made so far, these have been... Oh, my noises. I should probably cut that out, but I am too high production value to do that. These videos have been the worst to record out of any videos that I've ever, ever, ever made. Like, I've spent literally the last two days pretty much doing nothing but this uh, in my free time. Like, there's going to be over five hours of raw footage between just flying the missions, not counting all the building that took, you know, hours, hours, hours to do. So, uh, this video is just a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. And I usually like to get my videos out by about 11. 11.45 in the morning, have a premiere. Right now it's 5 p.m. And I'm recording the audio. So I'm going to need to, uh, going to need to, I guess, delay the video. So sorry that the video is delayed, guys, but tomorrow's video will be on time, which will be part two of this series. So uh, that is, that's the, my little, complete. Li literally everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Like, the, the station and the base are very big. So the frame rate with them is very, very low. Like, it's a it's a nightmare. It's like 10 FPS for hours driving around with cars and stuff and trying to align docking port heights. And this thing is really close on Delta V, and it's just a mess. But uh, it works out at the end, spoiler alert. So I'm going to get back to talking about our mission because I don't think you guys want to listen to me complain for the next however many minutes this video goes for. 
looks like about five and a half minutes left in the video. But um, so basically what we're doing now is we're going to be planting our ejection bird out to Duna. It's going to be about a thousand meters a second, thousand seventy to do our ejection bird. This thing has the delta V, so it shouldn't be any problem. Using our three nucle nuclears that we have rather in the back there to uh, power us out to escape velocity from Kerbin. And then we are going to be coming in to Duna. We are at a transfer window with Duna, which is why we can do the burn for as little as we do. I uh, do want to uh, thank Matt Laun. Um, he will be mentioned a lot of times because he did inspire a lot of a lot of a lot of the build techniques uh, that I used in the base uh, were inspired by him. Um, but this is actually about uh, he turns out if you if you know I'm going to try and spread the word with this left alt plus the period and comma key period or comic key depending on which way you want to go well actually you can enable physical time warp in space which means you don't need any sort of like you can on my uh, means you can increase your those like really long 10 minutes burns up to four times speed so they're only two and a half minutes so that is very good and uh, uh matt pointed that out in his newest video as of recording which is his uh, where he does a live commentary of a month like and i was like wow I, he said a lot, a lot of people don't know about that, and he is very right. A lot of people, I didn't know about that, and this has probably been a feature at least since 1.10, which has been out for over two months. So if you guys don't know, trying to spread the word, that is how that works. You can do it. So I'm just playing my uh, correction burn now to get set up for our Duna docking and rendezvous with the station, which is just hanging out at about a 75-kilometer orbit around Duna. And then we can go ahead and commence our docking once we get into Duna's sphere of influence. Let's finishing up our correction burn now, just finding tuning that. Uh, if you do it right, Duna, uh, we don't we don't do any error breaking or anything. But uh, this, uh, if you do it right, if you get a low enough periaps, uh, the uh, circularization burn or the capture burn should really be under 700 meters a second. So that's just something to aim for if you're doing a Duna mission. If you've uh, done it efficiently. Uh, if you haven't, don't worry. That's why you should always, on your first few interplanetary missions, carry way more fuel than you need. Don't worry about being efficient later. Um, if you're well, if you're playing on career mode, maybe not. But on sandbox mode, which is what I play in mostly, actually pretty much exclusively, um, then it is not of any concern. And we're we're covering this craft anyway, so it does not not a big deal. Even if we do have some extra fuel, which we don't. All right, so we're now just going ahead and time warping out to a Duna's height, and or Duna's sphere of influence, which there it is. We can go ahead and do our a capture a burn, which we are doing now. We can use that time warp to help speed it up because it would have been a pretty long burn. I would have had to sit there had I not had it, and that would have made the painfulness that it was these videos even worse. But uh, that didn't happen, so we're just going to go ahead and finish that up. And we are going to plan our maneuver node and just crossfade to us showing up at the station. So you guys don't have to watch all my maneuver node making. Now, here we are. You can get your first glimpse at the station. And the if you can see the frame counter in the top left, it is not very high. So we're just going to be coming up to the docking arm of the station. The station is split into four. It has that main module in the middle with the giant fuel tank with the command on top and the communications on bottom then it has four main pegs four main modules uh, we're going to be docking up to the docking module which is kind of what you do and you can see the lander is already docked up up top or just next to it uh, the other three modules we have power generation which has solar panels we have our transport or fuel transport vehicle which you can see down there docked to the other arm which that's its exclusive arm which is where it goes um, because that's where we transfer fuel from. The docking area that we're going to is where we uh, dock crew to. And then the other one is the refinery module. Uh, we don't usually use it at all just because you transfer, we, we transport the fuel up already refined, but it's just in case. Uh, maybe the base refinery is not working and we need to get some ore up because maybe someone needs to get refueled right away. Just a hypothetical situation. Uh, now we're just getting ready to uh, do some housekeeping things and then we're going to transfer our crew into the lander and we're going to get ready to do our landing at Duna. So just planning our maneuver node now to get down to the base, which you can see is uh, li labeled as a command pod, which is incorrect, but I should fix that. I don't 
throughout the whole series, so that's kind of sad. Now we're going ahead and do our landing a burn, and in just a second we will see which crew we have. Oh, would you look at that? Bill, Bob, and Valentina. There are three of the four orange suits are here, guys. That is where they've been. They've not made an appearance in any videos so far. So if you're wondering where they were, they were hanging out at the station just waiting for me to pick them up with the Flylon. And uh, we, they're going to be come back to the KSC soon. And they're going to be able to be partake in many more missions in the future. All right, so I'm just going ahead and popping all the parachutes out. We're going to be landing a little bit far away because if you land uh, close to the base, the frame rate is just awful. So we're going to land a little bit far away. Then we'll have to transport the crew to the, the base. Just going in and do our landing absolute smasher of a landing but that is gonna be it Kerbals can take a hard landing and welcome to duna and welcome to the end of part one thank you for watching we'll see you next time please rate or comment to this video once again thank you for watching we'll see you next time and bye